what is going on youtube it's your boy spanko and today i'm excited because i'm bringing you guys a deck that really is part of the tier one metagame right now and it's a very slept on deck and that is eldritch branded this deck is really cool because it functions as a control deck but it does have power cards like brand infusion to put out big monsters something like mirror jade which can push for a lot of damage but also control the board so if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content guys i'm so excited to be back on my regular schedule where i can bring you guys deck profiles there's going to be a vlog coming out on thursday there's gonna be feature matches on friday everything's gonna be fun i hope you guys do enjoy the content make sure you guys are subscribed we're really close to 6,000. let's see if we can make it happen thank you guys all for watching and with that i'm not gonna take much more of your time so let's get into the video okay so just before we get started with the deck profile this is a 40 card main deck all right so we're gonna start off with the eldritch package over here and that's two eldritch the golden lord three cursed eldland three eld elixir three conquistador as well as two hequero so i'm not playing the black or the white elixirs because i don't think you need them this ratio is perfectly fine you don't want to play too many of the eldritch cards themselves you just really want to play the best ones scarlet sanguine of course is really important it keeps recycling your golden lords and these two of course are really important as well i actually like playing three cross eldlands because this foolish burial effect is really really good especially when you're sending it off the golden lord and the card is just insanely powerful so i really like these ratios i don't think i change these up then for the branded engine we are playing two fallen albas one aluber as well as three branded fusion okay so i'm on one aluber right and the reason i'm on one aluber is because i noticed that the deck doesn't really have a normal summon i guess you could argue albaz is a normal summon but really this deck doesn't really have an actual normal summon for the deck and so i really like aluber for a couple reasons one you're not always going to get to your brand infusion so aluber obviously is going to search it and if they want to choose to ash the aluber or imperm the aluber that's one less hand trap that you kind of have to worry about so i really like the aluber in that sense also he's 1800 attack which is pretty good because sometimes if he's just sitting on board for you you can keep pushing for damage for this but another thing that's really nice about aluber is that he's a despia by name which gives you access to something like masquerade if you needed to so it's really really good in that sense Sense. and i just liked it because I, I noticed that when i was playing this deck that without the normal summon sometimes you would just fall behind or you wouldn't be able to push for enough damage so i really like a luber there as a normal summon for the deck one last thing though just before i move on from this engine you could argue to play multiple alubers like i've seen people on two i've seen people on one aluber and three opening that could be a thing as well i just like the one aluber i think the one aluber is enough you can maybe up it to two but the thing is with this deck you're already playing a lot of monsters with the fallen albaz because eldritch you know traditionally you don't want to play that many monsters so i noticed that when i was playing two or three alubers or alubers with the openings it became a little bit bricky so i really like these ratios and i think they're the best ratios moving on to another engine here that i really really like and that's actually main decking the one zombie world i'm also main decking one mine one terraforming as well as one necro world banshee so i want to talk about this a little bit originally i was actually on two zombie world and then the necro world banshee without the terraforming but i kind of noticed that going second this deck does struggle a little bit so for that reason i wanted to give myself some flexibility and so pretty much i wanted to play the terraforming so if i drew it going first i can search the zombie world or if i drew it going second i can always search the mystic mind and then it helps me play through a lot of boards so yes it sucks that you kind of have to play mystic mind but the card is just so insanely powerful and then i'm playing the one necro world banshee mainly because the main combo if you get to your brand infusion you do always want to send the banshee first before you even send your golden lord of course it all depends on your hands but mainly if i had the chance i would always want to send the banshee right away because this allows you to activate the zombie world and that's really really important because you guys are going to see later in the deck that we're playing other cards that make this engine insanely powerful so i really like main decking this engine next up for the floodgates here we are playing of course three skills drain you you can't not play skill drain right and this might actually be one of those things where people might talk about and be like but you're playing a luber why would you want to play skill drain if you're playing a luber yes but you have to keep this in mind first of all that's why we're only playing the one aluber and that's another reason why i was saying like some people are on two but i really don't like playing two because you start seeing them when you have stuff like skill drain on field and it becomes kind of an issue but another reason you have to be playing the skill drains of course with the alubers and all that stuff is because your opponent is never going to let this like always stay on the board now obviously if they don't have a main deck out then that's even better for you because at that point you're just going to be winning the game anyways but keep in mind a lot of decks are going to have the opportunity or ways to try and out the skill drain whether it be like foxy and salamangre whether it be just back removal whether it be just non-targeting there's a lot of ways that like, your opponent can just out the skill drain and so for that reason like you have to be playing the three of course so i just wanted to talk about that because i know some people are like oh skill drain and luber doesn't work together yeah it doesn't of course work together but i mean this card is just too powerful to not play right then we're playing three goes in match as well as two rivalry i think these are the perfect ratios i was actually originally on three and three but i noticed it was way too much you would see doubles of them way too often and then on top of that they don't really do anything once you set up the first one anyways for you so i think three and two is perfectly fine really the best one is skill drain to always open but rivalry is really good also in this deck because you have something like zombie world and again when you're main decking something like zombie world rivalry is insane because rivalry makes it so that each player can only control one type of monster so as soon as they put a monster on their side of the field it's a zombie right but all the monsters in their hand are not zombies so they can't summon any more monsters from their hand and or extra deck and on 
top of that, if you think about a lot of the meta matchups, one of them being Flunderies, Flunderies has no out to rivalry unless somehow they have like back removal. So this card is insanely powerful, especially with the zombie world. So I really like these and that's it for the floodgate ratios. Then to round off the deck, we are playing two Parlor Prosperity. Honestly, I want to play the third one and I'll show you guys what to play the third one for. I just only have the two at the moment. So I'm playing two Prosperity and three Super Poly. And this is what I was talking about when it came down to the zombie world package because zombie world makes all your opponent's monsters zombies, right? Which means that Super Poly now has a really, really good target in the extra deck that I'm going to show you guys. But Super Poly pretty much breaks any board because the main problem with Super Poly in the main deck in today's format is a lot of decks can't actually get Super Poly. So if you think about something like Sword Soul, Super Poly is not great into Sword Soul because they put up monsters with the same type because they're mostly old worms, but not the same attributes, which is opposite of Mud Dragon because Mud Dragon needs them to be the same attribute of different types. So there's no real good Super Poly target for Sword Soul, for example. There's no real good Super Poly target for Flunderies, for example, right? So a lot of the meta decks other than Despia don't actually lose to Super Poly. However, when you put up a card like Zombie World onto the side of the field and all their monsters become zombie, then Super Poly automatically becomes relevant. So this card's insanely powerful. If you wanted to play the third Prosp, maybe cut Super Poly to two and play the third Prosp. That's an option for you as well. But I've actually really been liking three Super Poly. This card's insanely powerful. I don't think I change these out because I, I love this card so much. And then obviously just to finish off the deck, we are playing three Ash Blossom. You need to be playing this in this format. And then one Call by the Grave. This card's insane. So this is just a round of the deck. It's 40 cards in the main deck. So to get into the extra deck, we are playing, of course, two Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade is obviously very important in an Albaz branded deck. So you're playing two of these. You're playing two Lubelion as well as three Albion. Albion is just really the best one to send because it's always going to search your brand infusion for your next turn. Then we're playing one type Titanic Clad. Actually, you know, you'd be surprised this card comes up a lot more often than you think because it gives you a super poly target, funny enough, if you have an Albaz in hand. Also, it also gives your Albaz a really good target if you normal summon your Albaz and then make this. So this card is insanely powerful. It also becomes a really big beater for you, which sometimes helps you push for games, right? And then you're playing one Masquerade. Masquerade is really, really good because, of course, this card lets you burn your opponent, essentially, and it's going to put your opponent on a clock. On top of that, when you're playing a bunch of Floodgates, this card becomes really good for you because it's kind of like, okay, now your opponent is going to try to dig through their deck to get to the out for the floodgate because some people do play the outs right but then the thing is when they're doing that they're going to be taking 600 burn each time and this is one of the reasons why i'm playing a luber also in the main deck because it gives you access to do this because sometimes if your opponent has a light or a dark monster forget the meta right if you're playing against any deck meta or non-meta if you just have an aluber on the other side of the field you can actually just super poly your aluber and then you can super poly one of their monsters so that you can make the masquerade and it becomes really really powerful in that sense keep in mind if you're playing against a despia matchup too if they make queridus queridus also helps you go into this because it's a despia monster so there's a lot of different ways where masquerade just can come up and it's very very powerful when it does come up so i really really like this card i wouldn't cut it at all then we're playing one draco necro this card is the card that makes super poly insanely powerful in this deck because you're playing zombie world which makes all your opponent's monsters zombie and this card essentially just requires two zombie monsters so this card by itself with super poly essentially breaks any meta board because you have the zombie world on the board and it becomes a 3k beater for you so sometimes this helps you push for damage which really is one of the things that Eldritch is missing so this card's insanely powerful then we're playing a bunch of super poly targets so we're playing draco stapilia starving venom as well as mud dragon these are just the su best super poly targets so you have to be playing these and then to round off the extra deck i decided to play one constellar pleiades this card's insane because you can use the trap cards to make this and then this card just helps you remove cards on your opponent's side of the field but also the nice thing about this card is it provides you with more damage than the traps would and it just helps you push again the biggest problem with this deck is because you're putting up a bunch of floodgates sometimes it's hard for you to actually push out a lot of damage and if you only have a golden lord on the your side of the field or you only have a mirror jade on your side of the field it becomes tough because your opponent can keep stalling you out by setting monsters and then you can't really actually always just game them so this thing really gives you opportunity to do a bunch more damage and gets you removal as well and then we're playing one lina lina is really good because of course your golden lords of light your traps are also lights which is really nice but lina is also really good because against a lot of the meta decks you can actually just take one of their monsters and sometimes i've actually done this to take a fairy tale snow and that's really powerful now of course sometimes you know they can chain the snow but if this is the only card on your side of the field them chaining the snow means they're just banishing seven to get nothing out of it so sometimes it pushes like cards out of their hand out of their field out of their graveyard so lina is really really good in just a lot of situations also if you randomly face something like a nightmare corruptor ibli which some people are playing or if you're playing against hero where they play dark angel and they put it to your side of the field this gives you the opportunity to just make that and get that off your side of the field so that you can keep playing right because those cards can be really really tough to play around sometimes and so for that reason you do need a link monster and i think lina is just the best one so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now eldritch branded i think is a sleeper meta deck it's definitely tier one it's a really Really, really good control deck if not the best control deck of the format right now i think this deck is really really cool if you guys have any suggestions let me know in the comments
comment section down below. That's how we get better together as a community. Also, if you guys did enjoy the video, just drop a like and make sure to subscribe. It's literally free. Just make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 6,000. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, thank you. This is I don't know. Peace.